Good morning. I'm Jonathan Noyalis, Director of Shenandoah University's McCormick Civil War Institute. This morning, I am coming to you from a virtual Green Hill Cemetery in Martinsburg, West Virginia. I've lived in Martinsburg for almost 16 years and have visited Green Hill Cemetery on numerous occasions. And to me, this cemetery has always been emblematic of the very deep divisions which existed not only in Martinsburg and Berkeley County during the Civil War, but the broader Shenandoah Valley as well. In Green Hill Cemetery are buried Union veterans, Confederate soldiers, Unionist civilians, and civilians who supported the Confederate war effort. And in future episodes, I'm gonna highlight some of those individual stories but today I wanted to focus on the stories of two men buried opposite one of another. And again, I think these two men's stories is rather emblematic of the divisions that existed in Martinsburg and Berkeley County during the conflict. Behind me is the grave of David Hunter Strother. Strother was a well-known figure um, before the Civil War. He was a renowned illustrator, gained notoriety working under the pseudonym Port Crayon um, for Harper's Monthly. Strother also is the one responsible for the design of Green Hill Cemetery. He designed it in 1854 and based it off of a cemetery he visited in France when he was in France um, learning his craft. During the Civil War, David Hunter Strother sided with the Union. He enlisted in 1862. He rose to the rank of Brevet Brigadier General, and he held a variety of posts. He served on the staffs of such Union generals as Nathaniel P. Banks, Franz Siegel, and his cousin, uh, General David Hunter. Opposite of David Hunter Strother's grave, again, symbolizing the divisions which existed in this Berkeley County community is the final resting place of Charles M. Rauch, who at the age of 22 um, enlisted in the 1st Virginia Cavalry. He enlisted um, within days following um, Virginia's secession. Rauch was wounded two times during the conflict, uh, once during the first week of May 1864 at Todd's Tavern. It took him a little more than two months to recover from that wound. He returned to the First Virginia on July 15th, 1864. And a little more than a month later, August 21st, uh, he was wounded in a melee uh, near Berryville, Virginia. Both Strother and Rausch survived the conflict. Strother died on March 8, 1888, at the age of 71. Rausch also died in March, but 38 years later, at the age of 87. So I want to thank you all for tuning in. I look forward to seeing all of you next time. Hope everyone is staying well, safe, and healthy. Take care.